phone ready, camera ready, audio is ready, screen is ready, screen is ready. Everything is set up. First things first, clap. 27 subscribers. It's starting to feel almost like a classroom already. I kind of like feel some responsibility of whatever it is that I'm saying now. I just wanted to thank you. I really feel motivated by this because as you have seen on my last videos, this is something that I am actually just starting to do. So I am sure that I am making a lot of mistakes, but I'm making all the effort that I can to change this and actually know what I'm talking about and that you can benefit from this as well. So I'm actually really excited about this video because I finally got to do some art during the week and I wanted to talk to you about something that I believe is essential or is key for any design or any art that you make and it's reference. Reference, reference, reference. I believe that sometimes having a strong mood board is just as important as your own art because it doesn't matter how experienced you are. Like it doesn't matter if you have been drawing characters for years now or you've like just started to draw something. There's always something new for you to analyze through reality or through somebody else's work. And sometimes it doesn't even have to do with the art itself, but just like knowing the subject that you want to base your drawing on. If you get more involved into whatever it is that you want to do, then you will also be more motivated to draw. Like I mentioned before, I wanted to start my project by making masks and helping the environment or some animals in some way. I'm still not sure how. So I visited this site, which is rewild and saw that there's this species, red colobus. But just by reading why this is an endangered species and where they live and the reasons why they're in danger, like I already started to feel motivated to help these guys. Like I have no idea <laughs> how I'm going to do. Like this is my first project. Probably I will just make one dollar and probably I will donate 50 cents of that dollar to this cause but I do want to help these species and this applies to any project that you want to draw on maybe you're drawing like some characters maybe instead of just starting to draw like the anatomy of your character you can do some digging on where this character come from like come up with a story and then do some research or some references that have to do with that story that you're making if that makes sense now let's jump to a couple of sites that i use pretty much all the time whenever i start to do something to look for references one is our station and this platform is so cool because it's filled with work with really talented artists like professionals that are working for really big studios or like they have years and years of experience or they're just like really good at what they do and you will find here like how they solve their own specific uh, situations with their own style and techniques so this is really inspiring sometimes although you might also want to be careful because once you start looking at this like there's non-stop like you will probably spend hours looking through the amazing adwords of others nevertheless always go for the top things or anything that really inspires you now the next platform of course is pinterest and this one like although you will not only find artworks here you will probably find a lot of products and photographs and stuff that might not be always useful for you i believe that it is very convenient because of how the search works like if you go to any image here and you click on it you will have a bunch of related images that will help you and you can create your own boards so even though this uh, platform is not only focused on artworks you will find that once you find that perfect image you probably have to do some digging at first but once you get to that specific image that you really like you will just click on it and chances are that you're gonna find all the reference images that you will need. Now the next source of reference that I tend to use almost all the time that I need to draw something that has to do with anatomy. I actually use a book that is not meant for that. It is an, it's a book that is meant to do exercise and for you to see which muscle is being worked by doing a specific exercise. But my mentor from years ago recommended me this book because of how exaggerated things are and you can identify muscles from multiple angles here like you will have all of these nice drawings showing you the multiple muscles and explaining you the parts so i think that this has been really useful for me and the final source of reference that i use is that whenever you actually want something that is really specific and you cannot find it online then you just go and take pictures of it it can be either of yourself if you're like looking for a really specific pose or like if you want to draw a hand and uh and you're not sure how to like just look at your hand and draw it or maybe take a picture of it and start drawing from it as well so researching about 
your subject first and then going maybe to our station to Pinterest, maybe look through some books that you find or that you own already and taking pictures are basically the sources of reference that I use. Now you want to find a way to look at your references without spending too much time maybe scrolling or navigating through tabs or something like that and really focus on your art. And for that, there are a couple of apps that I use depending on where I'm drawing. If I am in my computer or if I am able to have a computer where I draw either on the same computer or in the iPad, I use uh, Pure Ref. And Pure Ref is just an amazing app. They made it so easy for you to navigate or for you to zoom in on a specific area. Like I believe it's really, really easy for you to use. It is actually free. If you go to the site, you just hit download. There's a version for Windows, Mac or Linux. They do ask you to donate, which I actually did because this, this app has been really really helpful for me. But if you right now don't have like the resources to pay for it, you can just click the, the custom account and click zero and you will be able to download it for free. Let me show you a little bit of how those uh, pure ref actually looks like. So you can see that this is a gray infinite canvas where you just drag and drop your images and you can just navigate really easily. You have shortcuts for you to frame some of the things that you want. You can add notes for you to organize better your stuff. You can also have shortcuts for you to reorganize everything into a single square. And that's pretty much it. I know that it sounds very simple, but I cannot tell you enough like how this is helpful for me because it's so simple so I can focus on what I actually need to focus. And this has never crashed. This is so easy to use and you can navigate super fast in it. But what happens when you're on the go or maybe all you want to use is your iPad to both look at your references and to draw there at the same time. I believe that the simplest and free way for you to do that is to just divide your screen by placing an app like Pinterest with your boards there and start scroll down and see the images that, that maybe inspire you or are helpful for you and that's it. But I do like to have some sort of navigation to maybe look at some close-ups of the images that I use. And there's a similar app to Pure Ref in the iPad, which is called Biz Ref. But I just wanted to mention that it's actually $3.99 on the App Store but uh, you will see that it's really similar to pure ref. So you do need to make like a one step further. I recommend that you probably download your images through your files on the iPad somehow, like maybe from a computer to your iPad, which kind of gets tedious, but once you have them here in your board, you can do some of the things that uh, we were talking about on pure ref as well. But yeah, I really recommend this couple of apps for you to look at your references. And when I was looking at the references for my own mask project, I was kind of like feeling odd, felt like an outsider from the mask crafting community. So I decided that it would be cool for me to give back some of this help or this uh, inspiration that other artists are giving me to continue with my own project. And I would love to support all of the artists that I've seen out there, but unfortunately I don't have the resources to do that. But I think that maybe it's by supporting two or three could be like a nice way to start. So meet Daniel. This is a guy that I met on a market the other day that I was walking on downtown. And this guy makes like this kind of like paper masks or like cardboard masks. And I bought one of his masks. He was a really nice guy. It's kind of like a small size for me, but hey, the quality is really nice. And I thought that by having some of his artwork, I would be able to support him. Now the next artist is, uh, his name is Charlie. And I also met him at this market. He makes like this crazy fusion between animals and uh, mythical creatures that are called alebrijes. And some of his creations also include masks. And I bought the one that he is promoting on his website. So let me try that out. So what do you think? You can find these guys both on Facebook and Instagram. This guy is Xcamic and this is Charlie Alebrijes. And last but not least, I decided to support one of the mask crafters that I admire most. Uh, her name is Melita Corfi. I believe that's pronounced that way. And I met her work through Isa because she once bought like a really nice and cool figure that glows in the dark, it's like a lion. I started to follow her art and I saw that she has these really amazing crafts. You can see here that like her quality and her ideas are simply, it's just really inspiring to see. Unfortunately, right now I don't have the money to buy one of her masks, but I decided to become one of her top tier patrons as long as I can afford it. Um, just to show some support for her to continue doing what she loves most, right? 
And I also find that she basically uses her Patreon to upload all of the process or some of the process that she follows to make her crafts. So this is sort of like a win-win situation because if I ever have like a question on how to make maybe a cast of one of my masks or something like that, maybe I can reach out to her and she will be able to help me, hopefully. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope that next time that you start drawing something, you will consider to look at references for your own art project because they have for sure helped me and I am sure that they will help you to improve your art projects as well. I am really excited that I finally got to do some art for my own mask project. I think I like where this first Red Columbus mask is going and I will be posting on the platforms that we saw on the last video. So that's it. Yesterday was grooming day with Boba and right now he's so fluffy. So I will leave you with him. See you on the next one.